Hey guys, looks like it's beer 30. Let's go see what's in the fridge today. Hey everybody, thanks for stopping by today. Today's beer comes from, uh, uh, this is Golden Road Brewing, uh, and they are owned by AB and Bev, which I am not a fan of at all. All the beer breweries that they are buying up left and right, uh, but they have super deep pockets, and all these guys that are selling out of them, I consider them traitors. Uh, I've seen this, and I wanted to review it. Uh, a lot of these breweries, money talks and bullshit walks. So these guys uh, start these breweries and they have a good following and AB and Beth comes up uh, and they go, look at all these dollars we want to buy in. And some of the guys say no and a lot of the guys say, sure, come on in. Uh, Goose Island and a lot of other breweries have uh, taken that step into that game. And it has its advantages, uh, I will say, uh, better distribution. Uh, they can go to more states than what they've been going to before. And as long as AB and Bev doesn't throw their two cents in and want to move this beer somewhere else, like I did at Goose Island and uh, some of the other. All the beers that are brewed at Goose, Goose Island and that are done in Chicago are still exceptionally way uh, made beers. A lot of people think they're not as good as they as they were before. Uh, I was never able to try them then. Once AB and Bev come in, uh, they expanded the distribution, and and I'm able to get some of them sometimes. Most of them still have to be sent to me, especially from Chicago. Now a lot of their transitional beers that have been moved to New York, uh, I can get here. I can I can I can pick up here. But the ones that are still done in Chicago, like the Bourbon County series, the barley wines, and the stouts and coffee stouts, stuff like that, are not available here. They don't send them here. They send them all the stuff that comes from New York down here. Uh, the transitional beers is what I call them, and they're not all that. Not impressed at all with any of those. But everything still coming out of Chicago is still impressive with the Goose Island. And I'm not a fan of ABN, guys. Y'all know that. Uh, or Coors Miller, Savco, and they're all trying to get together, AB and Bev and Coors Miller and Savco, all of them trying to get together and buy, buy and get one big conglomerate. I'm not a fan of that. I, I can't believe they're letting them do that. Uh, that's, that's controlling the market as far as I'm concerned. Uh, but they're gonna, it looks like they're going to have their way. Uh, but I don't support those guys. They don't need my support. They, they got mega mega deep pockets and got the lobbyists on their side and, and so much going for them. They've controlled the beer industry since 1900, just before Prohibition. So uh, not a fan of that, not a fan of that at all. And usually uh, when that happens, uh, I don't buy their beers anymore even if they're available here. So uh, this is probably the last, the one and only time you'll see this beer being reviewed today by me. Uh, I hadn't reviewed it yet and so uh, I, I bought a four pack of this. And, uh, and wanted to review one of them before. But this is actually one that I picked up here locally. But uh, uh, AB and Bev turned me off from that. Even if it's a good beer, I'm not a fan of supporting those guys. I don't want to spend my money on something that's going into their pockets. So enough of that. Uh, it's not a fan of it, guys. Bottom line. Uh, Golden Road, uh, they're out of Los Angeles, California. So right there it tells you I, was, I bought this here in Virginia. They, that's already helped them get their distribution from California all the way to Virginia, from one coast to the other coast. So that aspect of AB and Bev getting involved is a good thing for the brewery. But 
by the time they throw their two cents in or something happens, people leave, things change. Uh, so uh, there's a lot of people that feel the same way I do, uh, whether they're beer reviewers, beer drinkers, uh, craft beer drinkers, and, uh, and uh, they, they're not a fan of that, even if they're part of this brewery. As we've seen, Surly has gone through this, and uh, a lot of other breweries have gone through this, and uh, especially when you have multiple people uh, that have gone together to start this brewery, you'll see, uh, well, this guy was part of it, and then he left, or the brewery left, and uh, I mean, things change once the breweries change hands like this. Uh, a lot of people are not a fan of that, whether you're a brewer, you work there, or whatever the case may be, so. Not going to harken on it. Let's get on with this. Let's see what this brings to the table. Uh, uh, says commercial description says previously 9.3%. And this one is 8.5%. So already something has changed. I mean, it's, uh, and I don't know who made that decision, whether it was ABN Bev or, or whatever. So uh, things do change. You know, whether they say, oh, we're going to be a silent partner or whatever. Things change once ABN, Bev, Coors, Miller, Sapco, whoever gets involved. Things change. And the people that, that, uh, that have had Goose Island before ABN and Bev got on will say, oh, it's not as good as it was. But you guys like me that never had it before still think those beers are pretty tasty when I can get my hands on them. So things do change, guys. That's the world. It keeps going around and around. Makes everything go around and around and around and around. But when I see the ABN Bev, every week they're buying another brewery, guys. They're buying this. They're buying that because they have such deep pockets. They can buy whatever they want to. And then they put the commercials on TV saying, oh, you know, they, they're, they're tithing Bud Light or Budweiser or something and making commercials and making fun of craft beer. But they're buying as many of them as they can. What a bunch of hypocritical sons of bitches as far as I'm concerned. Uh, oh. If I could just get my hands around the neck. <laughs> well, that's another story. Anyway, I don't want this to be a 30-minute video, so let's chop on with this. I don't think there's anything else we need to talk about. We'll jump over to the food pairings for this. And since it is a uh, uh, an imperial stout, uh, matter of fact, uh, Rape Beer has it as a herb, uh, spice, vegetable beer. And... Uh, Great Beer has it listed as a uh, American Double Imperial Stout. And this says Gingerbread Stout right here on it. So I don't know what's up with this. I mean, there's so many different conflicting bits of information on these beers from one site to the other. It's just hard for me to grasp uh, how they categorize this beer. It says Stout right on there, Gingerbread Stout. So I think it's a Gingerbread Stout, not a herb, vegetable, spice beer. Take it as you will. All right, food pairings for this style of beer, guys. Cheese of buttery brie, go to Havarti Swiss. Goes well to chocolate dishes, of course. Uh, the meat is beef, smoked meat, game, and grilled meat. Glass wire to plant back another tumbler snifter, oversized wine glass. And it says here can be settled for a long period of time. Looks like cola coming out of here. It's not super black, but it is pretty dark. As y'all can see. And this is a big can. Uh, I might be able to get it. Right up to the top, and I usually don't do that. I usually leave a little room for my big old nose to get down in there, but nothing's going to change from the first part of the pour to the last part of the pour on a stout. It's still going to be dark. So, about a quarter finger of head on that. Look pretty cola ish. I'm getting a little bit of red ruby tinges around the thin part of the glass on the bottom, pretty dark on the bowl part up here. Let's get a nose on it. Right off the top, the gingerbread is just, the spices and the gingerbread are right off the top. Great smelling beer. It really is. As much as it chaps my ass to say that for somebody that ABM owns, it does smell pretty good. But it used to be a bigger beer than what it is now, so I don't know who had an influence on that. And a lot of times from year to year, the recipes change, and the ABB changes, the IBU changes, everything changes. Even if they're trying to do the same, sometimes it, it still changes. That's how it is in the beer brewing business. And now the head has faded completely, it's just 
barely covering the top of the beer. Time to dive in. Cheers. For an 8.3 percenter, it's got kind of a thin mouthfeel. A little on the watery side, mouthfeel on this one would be light to medium. Not a thick, chewy, heavy stout like a lot of the 8, 9, 10 or bigger beers are. It says made in LA right on here. Golden Road. Very, very colorful can. It doesn't have a lot of different colors on it. Basically white with some silver graphics and this uh, golden color on the front here. It says back home, gingerbread south. Decent beer as far as I'm concerned on the initial tasting. But it's not a thick, heavy, chewy beer. The gingerbread, spices, cinnamon, Ginger, nutmeg, allspice. It's all there. I'm getting all that. D decent initial first tastings. But it's right out of the fridge, 40 degrees. Let me sip on it for just a little while. It's not like a bourbon barrel aged beer or anything like that. Uh, but it seems to be decent right now. So let me see where we end up with it after I sip on it in about 30 minutes or so. Be right back. Alright guys, I'm back. I'm going to on about 20 minutes or so. It's a tasty beer, guys. I mean, it's not exceptional. Nothing to write home about or nothing outstanding. Uh, kind of thin for what it is. Uh, definitely got the big gingerbread, nutmeg, ginger, allspice. All those pumpkin pie spices in with this one to go with it. Very tasty. It is. Uh, like I said earlier, I'm not a big fan of AB and Bev. You'll probably not see me re-review re this. When I bought it, I didn't know AB and Bev uh, had bought them out. So, uh, just like Devil's Backbone, which is a local brewery to me, they're an hour or so up the road. I don't buy their beers anymore as far as go-to beers. Uh, you may see me review something I haven't reviewed before from them, but it would be only on a buy a single. I'm not going to buy a four pack or a six pack of anything from them because they've been bought out. I don't support the big guys. I really, really don't. And young guys know that. I, I just don't. Uh, I'm just not a big fan of maybe InBev or Miller Sapco or maybe a, all three of them now that they're trying, uh, AB InBev is trying to buy all them out. Uh, and I don't think that should happen. Uh, that corner of the market when they do that, and they've been trying to do that since 1900, uh, before Prohibition, uh, they've been trying to do that. And they've got the lobbyists on their side, but maybe we'll uh, we'll get a change on some of that stuff now that the elections have happened, and we'll see where that goes. Uh, decent beer, not outstanding, not world class, not something that I would probably buy again because of who owns it. Uh, but I did want to pick it up and review it for you guys. and. Uh, I think it's I think it's an okay. I think it's above average beer, but I don't think it's a world class or outstanding. I actually don't even think it's an A beer to be honest with you. So, final chug. Very thin. A little on the watery side for an eight point five uh, percent. And like I told you, uh, I think it was a bigger ABV beer before ABM got involved. Uh, I think it was at a nine point something percent. Uh, so uh, a lot of times things change when uh, uh, somebody like ABM or, or Miller Sadco uh, gets involved in this. Uh, it changes some things. But like I said, it has its pluses and it has its disadvantages. Disadvantages is uh, they give their influence and, and the recipe changes and, and a lot of stuff happens there. Plus, uh, side of that is uh, bigger distribution, uh, dating machines, just about everything that AB InBev has their hands on has dates on it, just like Budweiser and all that stuff does. 
so that's a good thing on that side, but when they come in there and start messing with the recipes and start changing things, uh, I'm not a fan of that. Uh, yeah, by doing that, it, it, it doesn't help the brewery out. It doesn't. Uh, so, well, let's get on with it, guys. As far as I'm concerned, on this particular beer, tasty beer, not an A beer. Uh, uh, it does have uh, some nice redeeming qualities with the gingerbread aspect of it. Very tasty, a lot of ginger, all, uh, uh, nutmeg, allspice, uh, all the stuff you would think with a pumpkin beer, but it's a nice stout. It is a very, very nice stout. If it was a bourbon barrel aged, it'd be even better. But no, I don't think the I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, I just, I just don't. It may. Uh, I'd be surprised. It is a can, uh, which is good for uh, for all beers. It really is, especially IPAs. Many keg on as far as IPA. You don't let the light in. Don't skunk up. The only thing uh, has a longer shelf life. And, and once you get into the 8.5 percent stouts, uh, it's a good thing. Cans are good all the way around, guys. Many kegs. Uh, it is a good thing. And a lot of people, and I used to be in that crowd too, a lot of people think, oh man, I'm a, a bottle of beer tastes better. If you can, I take the metallic and all this stuff. Uh, the cans are a lot better now than they used to be. So, uh, I've got, I'm, to be honest with you, I get more t metallic taste from some of the, the bottle beers uh, than I do from the canned beers. I really do. So, uh, Numeric rating for me on this one, guys. Uh, it's a B beer as far as I'm concerned, and I'm going to put it in the middle of the road. I'm going to give it an 85, which is the 6. So, uh, with that being said, let's go over to Beer Advocate. They say 86 in the very good range. Good numbers there. And over to uh, Rate Beer. Rate Beer says, ooh, 78 overall, but 91 in the style. Not very good numbers from those guys over there. And from our final check-in... And uh, as far as the, the numbers from those guys, and there's a lot of people that do beer reviews and, and post on these sites that feel the same way I do uh, when these uh, big beer companies buy these craft beer breweries out. Uh, it changes everything. It, it, and it does to me. It does to me. Uh, it, makes, it influences me whether I'm going to buy their beers uh, as a go-to beer or whatever. Uh, well, I will purchase them again, and I probably will not purchase it again just because AB and Bev owns it. And uh, if it was a 8, 9, 10 beer in my scale, I may think twice about that, but I'm not a fan of uh, lining the big beer companies' pockets. They don't need my help. So, probably won't buy it again. That's, that's the way I feel about it. Uh, and over to Untapped, Untapped has it at 3.78 for their rating, which is pretty good. Uh, that's good numbers for them because they average everything out and give you that rating. So, uh, very nice. It's a very nice beer. It's above average, but it's not outstanding. Not to the A category as far as I'm concerned. A little on the thin side, a little watery. But if you're looking for something that's got the gingerbread and, and the uh, allspice and nutmeg and and uh, all that kind of stuff for uh, like a pumpkin beer would have. It's, it's pretty tasty. It is pretty tasty. The other half liked it. I did too. Yeah, so. But anyway, uh, it does have a date on the bottom of the can. This one says packaged on 9-29-2016. So that is a good aspect. That is probably the only good aspect as far as I'm concerned. Bigger distribution and having dating on the cans or bottles. So that's, that's a win-win for the brewery and for us. But when they start going in and say, oh, we, we want to change this, we want to do that, and then the, the head brewer leaves and and people that own the brewery leave and all that stuff, you, that tells you there's some uh, disgruntled things going on there. So, And then they put commercials out saying uh, craft beer breweries suck, uh, like uh, Anheuser-Busch did or AB Bev did. Last Christmas, uh, yeah, that that runs all over me. Um, they're making fun of us guys, and I don't like that. I do not like that. So, 
Uh, that's what we got on the, on the ratings. Uh, if you had this one from Golden Road, and they're out of Los Angeles, California. And uh, uh, like I said, uh, I'm here in Virginia and probably could not get this beer here before AB and Beth got involved in it. So uh, there are some good things when that happens, and there are a lot of bad things that happens when these big beer, big beer uh, breweries or AB and Bev or, or Middle Court South Co. get involved. It, it can be good, it can be bad, and there's a 50-50 thing there you got to weigh out whether you want to support those guys. I do not. I do not. So uh, they don't need my help. Their pockets are way too deep, and they got the lobbyists on their side. Uh, maybe things will change down the road here now that we got an election going on. And uh, we've decided who's going to be the next president. Let's see what happens. All right, guys. Uh, I don't think there's anything else we need to talk about. Uh, decent beer, but not outstanding in my opinion. So if you've had this one from them, let me know what you think. Come back tomorrow. We'll dig something tasty out of the fridge. Probably not from ABM, though. See you then.